Hi, today I'm talking about the American singer Whitney Houston who tragically died at the age of 48. So let's plunge right in. Whitney Houston was an American singer and actress. She sold millions of records worldwide and became a huge star. However, rumours of drug abuse tarnished her image and tragically it contributed to her death. Whitney Elizabeth Houston was born on the 9th of August 1963 in Newark, New Jersey to ex-army serviceman and Newark City Administrator John Russell Houston Jr and gospel singer Emily Houston who was known as Sissy. Both her parents were African American. Her older brother Michael Houston is a songwriter and her older half-brother is a former basketball player for the Denver Nuggets and is also a singer, Gary Garland. Gary is Sissy's son. Sissy performed backing vocals for Elvis Presley and Aretha Franklin. She also had a solo career and won two Grammys for two gospel albums. Whitney was the first cousin of singer Dionne Warwick and her sister singer Dee Dee Warwick on her mother's side of the family, so music was all around her and in her blood. Whitney was raised as a Baptist but also had connections to the Pentecostal church. Her parents separated in 1977 and eventually divorced years later in 1991. Whitney started singing in the choir of the New Hope Baptist Church in Newark at the age of 11. At 15 she performed with her mum and started getting work. She did backing vocals on Chaka Khan's song I'm Every Woman. She was also a model and was one of the first African American women to be on the front cover of Seventeen magazine. She appeared in commercials for Coca-Cola and Dr Pepper and turned down the role of Sonia Huxtable, the eldest daughter on The Cosby Show, because she wanted to concentrate on her musical career. Every one of her seven studio albums and two soundtrack albums have reached the status of either gold, platinum, multi-platinum or diamond. She sold approximately 200 million records. The Bodyguard original soundtrack album from the movie The Bodyguard, she starred in with Kevin Costner, became the best-selling soundtrack album of all time. I researched to see the top 20 best-selling movie soundtracks as I thought it would be quite interesting to find out what they were. Number two is Saturday Night Fever. Number three is Purple Rain. Number four is Forrest Gump. That's a surprising one. Number five, Dirty Dancing. I love the music from Dirty Dancing. Patrick Swayze was so gorgeous in it, wasn't he? Number six is Titanic. Number seven, The Lion King. Number eight is Footloose, another favorite of mine. Kevin Bacon and Chris Penn were fabulous, weren't they? Number nine is Top Gun. Number 10, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Number 11 is Grease. That had a sharp somewhere, didn't it? Then number 12 is Waiting to Exhale, another Whitney Houston movie where the soundtrack has sold millions of copies, but there are various artists singing on the album, not just Whitney. Number 13 is The Little Mermaid. 14 is Pure Country, 15 is Flashdance, 16 is Space Jam, 17 The Big Chill, 18 City of Angels, 19 is The Jazz Singer, Neil Diamond's voice is lovely isn't it, and number 20 is Evita. Another movie Whitney starred in was The Preacher's Wife in 1996. The soundtrack album to this movie is the biggest selling gospel album of all time, selling approximately 6 million copies. She won 6 Grammys, they were for the Best Pop Vocal Performance by a Female for Saving All My Love For You, Best Pop Vocal Performance by a Female for I Wanna Dance With Somebody Who Loves Me, Best Pop Vocal Performance by a Female for I Will Always Love You, Album of the Year for the Bodyguard Soundtrack Album, Record of the Year for I Will Always Love You, and the Best Female R&B Vocal Performance for It's Not Right But It's Okay. In 1992, Whitney married singer and rapper Bobby Brown, and they had one child, Bobby Christina Brown, who was born in 1993. 
In February 2012, Whitney had just finished filming the movie Sparkle and was getting ready to attend record producer Clive Davis's pre-Grammy Awards party at the Bevy Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills. She checked into room 434. On Thursday the 9th of February 2012, Whitney went to the True Hollywood nightclub at 1600 Argyle Avenue, Los Angeles. It is now closed. She joined singer Kelly Price on stage and sang Jesus Loves Me. This was her last public performance. During her time at the club, she accused X Factor contestant Stacey Francis of trying to steal her boyfriend, Ray J, and caused quite a scene. On Friday the 10th of February, the next day, Whitney was with her 18-year-old daughter, Bobby Christina, in the gift shop of the hotel when she saw the front page of the National Enquirer that had an unflattering photo of her and a disparaging headline implying she was messed up. Whitney started screaming at the sales clerk and had to be calmed down. On Saturday the 11th of February 2012, her final day, Whitney awoke feeling unwell due to her drinking and partying in the last few days. She took medication and spoke to her cousin, Dionne Warwick, on the telephone. At around 2.45pm she tried to call her pastor, but he missed her call. At 3.35pm, Whitney's assistant, Mary Jones, entered her hotel suite and saw the floor was extremely wet. She went into the bathroom and found Whitney face down in the bath. Whitney was too heavy for her to lift out of the water and so she got Whitney's bodyguard, Ray Watson, to help her. They managed to lift Whitney out of the bath and CPR was administered. Jones called the hotel switchboard to get them to call 911. At 3.55pm, Whitney was pronounced dead. Pre-Grammy Awards party went ahead with Whitney Houston lying dead upstairs because the coroner didn't move her body until 10 hours after her death. Forensic pathologist Dr Richard Shepard looked at her autopsy report and discovered that Whitney's lungs showed she was suffering from emphysemia. This was due to her smoking tobacco as well as marijuana. She was also known to smoke crack too. She had a fatty liver due to her heavy drinking. She also had a perforated nasal septum that had been caused by her cocaine habit. Her favourite way to take cocaine was to freebase it by inhaling the vapours when it was heated in a spoon. The right coronary artery of her heart had narrowed by 60%. She had benzodiazepines in her body, which are anti-anxiety drugs and other prescription drugs too. As her lungs were waterlogged, it meant she was still alive when she fell face down into the water. Her knees and face showed bruising, which is consistent with a fall. Cocaine was found on a hand mirror in the bathroom, along with a spoon that had traces of a white substance on it. The bath water had a very hot temperature and her legs showed damage caused by burns. So the overall theory was that Whitney got into scalding water, but as the cocaine dulled her brain, she didn't actually feel it. Her body, however, reacted with the shock, causing her to faint, hit her head on the bottom of the bath, and she subsequently drowned. She gave Diane Sawyer an interview in 2002, where she stated, I'm not self-destructive, but unfortunately she was. Her daughter, Bobby Christina Brown, was the sole beneficiary of Whitney's estate, and she died in a similar way to her mother. In January 2015, just short of the third anniversary of her mother's death, she was found face down in her bathtub at her home in Georgia. After being in a coma for six months, she died in July 2015 at the age of 22. An autopsy revealed there was alcohol, marijuana, morphine, benzolycanine, which is a cocaine-related substance, and benzodiazepines, which are used for sedation or to treat anxiety. So the underlying cause of her death was a result of immersion in the bathwater and drug intoxication. It isn't known if it was intentional or accidental. Whitney was buried in Fairview Cemetery, 11,000 East Broad Street, Westfield, New Jersey. Her plot is in the East Meadow section. Bobby Christina was buried next to her. So that was a tragic waste wasn't it she had such a beautiful voice didn't she so if you like this video please like share subscribe press the notification bell and i'll see you in the next one bye